It is time when the stoner Jesus show puts away the silliness and talks about the serious issues of the day because there's serious shit going down, people. Did I mention that it's serious? You have no fucking idea. They're coming after us. By them, I mean the fucking corporations, the government. It's all one big corrupt fucking gang that wants everything we have. That is why we take time out of the Stoner Jesus show and out of the comedy to talk about the serious issues of the day with Pothead Punditry. Our nation stands on the brink. Every day brings new federal encroachments that take our freedoms and strangle our will. There comes a time when the silliness must take a back seat to the serious issues of the day. The time is now. It's time to fight back and reclaim the freedom that is rightfully ours. It is time to discuss the serious issues of the day with Stoner Jesus's Pothead Punditry. That's right. It's Podhead Punnetry. Thank you everybody who's listening to the Standard Jesus Show Live and later on podcast. And thank you to everyone who is watching this later on YouTube. It's our fourth edition of Podhead Punnetry where we talk about the serious issues of the day. Tonight we are talking marijuana, marijuana legalization, medical marijuana. We get our marijuana news exclusively from the 420times.com. First story I want to talk about. President Obama begins to distance himself from the medical marijuana crackdown in California. The story says it seems President Obama has realized just how unpopular his administration's medical marijuana crackdown in California is, and suddenly his minions are saying it was all their idea. According to U.S. Attorney spokesperson Lauren Horwood, the entire crackdown was the brainchild of the four California U.S. Attorneys and Deputy Attorney General James Cole without the knowledge of Attorney General Eric Holder or President Obama. Um, And they they talk about a story where uh, supposedly the same Lauren Horwood said that they did receive Obama's blessing, but then she came back out and said she misspoke and that um, that they did not receive Obama's blessing. In fact, she says it didn't even go past this James Cole dude to Eric Holder. So, we're expected to believe... And uh, I think it's total fucking bullshit. But we're expected to believe anyway. This is their excuse. A multi-million dollar law enforcement crackdown in California that will decimate a very vital industry to California, which is the largest electoral state in the country. It is a state that if President Obama loses, he loses the presidency. There's nothing he can do to make up for that. The loss of that many electoral votes. In less than a year, he is up for re-election. Why in the fuck would any politician in their right mind do this right now when all he could have done was left things alone? His base would have said, yay, you're very progressive. Republicans would have bitched and moaned, but they're going to bitch and moan anyway. They hate Obama. They're not going to vote for him. Independents, they're pissed for all sorts of reasons. The anti-war people are pissed. Like I talked about the other night, the environmentalists are pissed at Obama. The liberal wing, uh, the Democratic Party is in fucking full revolt. There's not anybody running against him yet, but it wouldn't be surprising. It's happened before. Um, Ted Kennedy ran against Jimmy Carter in 1980 when he was running for re-election. Uh, Pat Buchanan ran against George H.W. Bush in 92 when he was running for re-election. It's happened before, and it can happen again. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody challenged Obama. But, so why is he doing it? What other reason can there be other than he's a puppet for the pharmaceutical industry? They're paying him a ton of money to eliminate their biggest competition, which is medical marijuana, specifically in California. Last I saw, there was over 300,000 
I think registered medical marijuana patients in California, but there, there there's estimates to say there's over a million total. So these people, they're getting fucked by President Obama. Many of them voted for him. Where's he going to make up them votes? Is the money from the pharmaceutical companies enough? I don't know. Where's he going to make up them votes? He's pissed off the independents. The Republicans will always hate him. The Tea Partiers want to lynch him. So what the fuck? What the fuck's he going to do? Where are those votes going to come from? Anyway, um, so that's what's going on with uh, with Obama on uh, medical marijuana in California. Here's another story from the 420times.com. How the federal government sets local police against U.S. citizens. It's by uh, old hippie. Medical marijuana users and their supporters, who number over 70% of the public at this point, have been rightly horrified at the Obama administration's crackdown on medical marijuana dispensaries in California. This new policy has been forcing dispensaries to close, which is forcing patients to break the law, many for the first time, by buying untested, unsafe medicine off the streets. We did a story, uh, I don't know how many, it was a couple months ago, that they tested like street weed off of um, off the streets of Detroit after they closed a bunch of dispensaries in Michigan, and this shit is full of mold spores and all kinds of other shit that can literally make you sick. Anyway, the, the article continues, the jury is still out as to whether Obama's Department of Justice is demonstrating cluelessness, they don't know what they're doing, corruption, they're taking money from the Mexican cartels, or merely nastiness, they don't like sick people. Uh, indeed, the, the Mexican cartels, a lot of them, we support. It's been documented publicly. You can look on, uh, look it up on Google. <coughs> excuse me. Where not only the Fast and Furious scandal, we were running guns into Mexico, supposedly for the the, uh, the purpose of tracking them, but then we lost track of thousands of them, and they were used to kill a shitload of people. But it's documented in many stories how the Border Patrol lets through certain 18-wheelers, certain trucks. They come from certain cartels that work for the U.S. government. You think that's a conspiracy theory? Like I said, go fucking look it up. Research this shit for yourself. I'm not trying to brainwash you about anything. Go look it up. The article continues, but that's not the worst part. They're also effectively bribing local police to do their bidding. And it's not just medical marijuana patients or even marijuana users they're targeting but everyone. Stephen Downing, former deputy chief for the LAPD, revealed that the feds are dangling a $72 million carrot to California law enforcement to step up the failed war on drugs. This is the tip of the iceberg whose size is almost incalculable. And there's a ton of links uh, just in this article alone. Powerful politicians like Harry Reid in Nevada are proud of the amount of federal money they get for their state while ignoring the carnage and human toll behind the manic- manical manical I can't say that right now. War on drugs. But wait, there's more. The feds have discovered a new mom flag and apple pie hot button that all right-thinking Americans are expected to be 100% behind. It's the new war, the war on terrorism, just like the war on drugs, and involves an amorphous enemy that sounds evil and lots of lots of federal money to fight it. Don't get me wrong, terrorism is indeed evil, but so is ripping up the Bill of Rights to fight it. By giving local law enforcement billions of dollars to upgrade surveillance capabilities against the citizens of the United States, the federal government is drawing a new line in the sand. They're putting themselves and police and their money on one side of the line and the people on the other. They're making us, the 99%, if you will, into potential enemies of the state, as represented by the feds and the police, forgetting that we are the state. Citizens, police, and politicians alike must unite to reject this us-versus-them mentality before it's too late. Here, here. Um, another story. Let me go check my time here. We're good. We've got about 15 minutes left here on uh, GasHouseRadio.com. A Pennsylvania boy, 13 years old, the story says he got ill after smoking synthetic pot and died. This is from uh, originally from the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, reprinted with Associated Press. A Pennsylvania 8th grader who became ill after smoking synthetic marijuana and had a double lung lung transplant has died. Tanya Rice tells the Pittsburgh Tribune Review that her 13-year-old son Brandon died Thursday morning at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh at UPMC. The boy smoked the fake marijuana out of a plastic Pez candy dispenser. 
The chemicals in the drugs caused extensive damage to his lungs. Brandy was put on the respirator in June and had a double lung transplant in September. The boy's mother said anti-rejection drugs he'd taken since the transplants weakened his immune system and made him unable to fight a recent infection. Governor Tom Corbett signed a law outlawing sub- such substances in Pennsylvania a few days after the boy smoked the substances. The ban took effect in August. Uh, a few things. First of all, as people pointed out on Twitter when I posted this story, um, when I tweeted this story, there's um, there's there's one one has to wonder, you know, if he inhaled some of the plastic or whatever. But the bottom line is, first of all, if weed was legal, this shit wouldn't exist. There wouldn't be said that the so-called legal high that fucking uh, college sophomores are making in their dorm rooms and packaging it and selling it through fucking, uh, it used to be through gas stations, but now of course it's been banned, which is doing nothing, because bans never do, prohibition never works, no matter what the product is you're prohibiting. All it does is force it underground. And now, it's even worse. You think uh, street weed uh, can be dangerous? Smoke some of this shit. There's people going to the hospitals. You don't know what's in this shit. You don't know what kind of chemicals are in what you're smoking. And it all comes from prohibition. If it wasn't for prohibition, people would get weed. First of all, they get it from licensed retailers uh, who check ID. Uh, Newsflash, motherfucker. Drug dealers don't check ID. You're always whining about the children and the kids. Well, little Timmy could go right down the street and buy a dime bag. Or he can buy a, a fucking kilo of coke. And he's got the cash. They're not going to say, oh, can I see your ID? Anyway, I digress. Um, the point is, none of this would be happening without marijuana prohibition. Other stories from the420times.com. Uh, the former Mexican president calls for full drug legalization. And that's the thing. And then we'll get to the major story of the day in the weed world. But, and a lot of people say, oh, no, we can't legalize all drugs. Well, you know what? You have to. I'm going to say straight out, you have to legalize all drugs. The Mexican cartels are huge, they're violent, they have tons of guns, they're in a thousand United States cities. That's documented, not on the 420times.com, but an FBI report. Cartel presence in 1,000 American cities. I didn't even know we had a thousand cities, but apparently we do, and there's Mexican cartel people in all of them. These motherfuckers, they chop the heads off of people, they put them in duffel bags and stack them to a lab next to an elementary school. They kill people, cut open their stomachs, and then hang them off of bridges for twittering about their, their, uh, what they're doing. And now they're coming over the border. Google that shit too. There's tons of instances where the violence is spilled into the United States, and it's just going to get worse. We are feeding these motherfuckers huge amounts of cash. Because of the inflated price that prohibition brings for all drugs. You legalize all drugs, you crash the market. You crash the prices. I know a lot of marijuana growers out there are pissed off. You say you can't do that. you got to do that. You're not going to stop these people. The Mexican military is fighting these people. They're losing. They're bought. They're corrupt. Uh, and the ones that can't be bought off are killed. And this shit's coming to this country. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. When is enough enough? When a stray bullet from a fucking gang war hits your kid in the head, you're going to wonder what the fuck you were doing. Why you had your, your eyes closed all these years. Why you didn't listen to people who said this shit's coming. You can look it up. You can read all about it. Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, uh, mainly in Texas. Cartel violence. And the only thing that can be done... It's full legalization. You have to destroy the market. People say, oh, they'll go to other things. They'll go to loan sharking and all that other bullshit. Well, that's loan sharking's problem, isn't it? You ban something, it doesn't work. But the bulk of their money, in excess of 90% of it, comes from drugs. You will destroy these people and their profits. They can't buy guns. They can't bring violence to other people. It's a cycle that goes on and on. 
perpetuated by corrupt people in the governments who make money off the war on drugs. Anyway, the last story of the night, before we get out of here, we are broadcasting live on Spreaker and GasHouseRadio.com. This is Pothead Punditry, for those of you listening on podcast and on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Patients, patient advocates, I mean, to say, sue the Obama Department of Justice over medical marijuana crackdown. In an attempt to fight back against the recent federal medical marijuana crackdown in California, the patient advocacy group Americans for Safe Access has launched a legal salvo at the Obama administration for the regressive use of federal power. Here is ASA's press release on their lawsuit. And it goes into detail, this long press release. Basically says, the lawsuit uses Tenth Amendment to challenge federal overreaching and commandeering of state law. Americans for Safe Access, the country's largest medical marijuana advocacy organization, filed suit in federal court today challenging the Obama administration's attempt to subvert local and state medical marijuana laws in California. ASA argues in his lawsuit that the Obama Justice Department has instituted a policy to dismantle the medical marijuana laws of the state of California and to coerce its municipalities to pass bans on medical marijuana dispensaries. The Department of Justice policy has involved aggressive SWAT-style raids, criminal prosecutions of medical marijuana patients and providers, and threats to local officials for merely implementing state law. Although the Obama administration is entitled to enforce federal marijuana laws, the Tenth Amendment forbids it from using coercive tactics to commandeer the lawmaking functions of the state, said ASA Chief Counsel Joe Elford, who filed the lawsuit today in San Francisco's federal district court. The case is aimed at restoring California's sovereign and constitutional right to establish its own public health laws based on this country's federalist principles. The ASA lawsuit, which seeks declaratory and injunctive relief, was filed on behalf of its 20,000 members in California who are directly and adversely affected by the Department of Justice actions. So, they're fighting back. Fucking good for them. This is bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. And people are tired of it, as well they should be. What's the point of going after sick people in California? Who gives a fuck? Okay, not all of them are sick. Some of them say they have back pain because they want to smoke weed. Big fucking deal. That's not what's bringing down this society. What's bringing down this society is stupid, fascist, socialist cocksuckers who continue prohibition and continue throwing cannabis users in jail because they